The heavy rain was beating against the window like a persistent reminder of isolation. Each drop was increasing the hollow emptiness inside you. You were sitting on the small desk working on the laptop. You were in a small company right now where you work as an ordinary employee. Midnight had come and gone and the rest of the employees had long since left for the comfort of their homes. Their laughter and idle chatter was still echoing in your ear which always made you feel more down and sad as long ago you forgot to laugh or talk to someone. And whenever you see someone giggling or laughing you wish to do the same but every time you get failed the flickering like of the sound my monitor was casting ghostly shadows around the deserted office. Your back was etching while your eyes went dry from staring at the screen of the laptop but you had no other choice than working your parents wanted you to do over time. They always saw you as nothing more than a source of income always pushing you to work long hours so you could bring more money to them though you were the only source of their income but your parents never showed affection towards you. They always compared you with other girls who had more glamorous jobs and better pays for them you were just a tool. The rain drummed louder which made you sigh your eyes were getting heavier. You shifted uncomfortably on your seat trying to find a position that couldn't make your spine feel like it was about to snap. No one would ever come and help you. You closed your swollen eyes for a moment letting the tiredness wash over you. Sleeve was tempting. Suddenly you remembered about your co-workers earlier conversation who were talking about their sweet families. We can plan the little comforts to cherish the life. This was the kind of life you could never imagine. What was it like to be cared for you were wondering suddenly your phone buzzed jolting you out from your thoughts you picked it up from the wooden table and glancing at the screen a sigh left your mom. Are you still working dear if not make sure you do otherwise you know how rude I can be you said swallowing the lump in your throat ignoring the tears that pricked your eyes the rain outside was growing more and more heavier. You looked outside the window washing there that you could just disappear. After three hours sitting down the laptop you rubbed your exhausted eyes you glanced around the office which looked like a tomb suffocating in its illness you pushed your chair back the creak of the wheels echoed in silence you somehow stood up. You grabbed your belongings and slipping into your overcoat you walked outside the office. As you approached the dark road, the rain became more heavier which soaked through your thin overcoat. The icy drops were hitting your body but it felt a strange kind of relief to you. The roads were empty. The kicking sound of your high heels were fading by the thunderstorm. For the first time, you didn't want to go back home. You didn't want to face your parents or the life they forced into you. You didn't want to hear their voices or feel like judgment. You were walking gamelessly on the road. Finally, you noticed the cab coming on the same road that you were walking on. You waved the cab driver to stop the cab. He didn't stop first but then seeing you shivering with cold, he felt piety and decided to give you a lift. You sighed in a relief as you jumped inside the car. The driver started the warm engine which made you feel contempt. Your teeth started to grit with cold. Can you please drive faster? You asked. You should be thankful to me that I gave you a lift in this much bad weather but instead you are complaining about speed, he replied. Finally you asked him to stop the car as you had reached your home. You got off and paying the money you unlocked the door by using spare key. Reaching the dimly living room you looked around for your parents who had slept in their rooms long ago. Letting out a deep sigh you went upstairs to your room to change the dress before you catch a cold. Turning on the shower tap, you closed your eyes to relax for a moment. After a few minutes, you came back in your room where you fall yourself on the bed because if you didn't do so, you might get fainted. It was around 6 o'clock in the morning when you heard a long bang on the room door. You opened your eyes and rushed to unlock the door as you opened it you received from your mom. Wake up. And make breakfast for us. She shouted, glaring at your innocent face. Yes, mom. 
You are getting up from the floor. Don't call me mom. She yelled and went to the downstairs. Pushing the rising tears back, we followed her to the downstairs. We went to the kitchen from where you picked up two eggs, bacon and some bread to make a breakfast. Once you were done making the breakfast, you served them on the table and then you stood there with head down as it was an order from your father. Now go and clean this living room. She said while eating the food. You nodded and bringing the broom, you started to clean the living room. Who will clean my room? She said. First I will clean this, then I will go to your room. You said politely. Ha, huh, honey, she whined dramatically looking at your so-called father. What's the problem, dear? He asked chewing the food. She said that she won't clean my room and that's I am mental. She said fakely crying. No, mom, I never said that. You said looking at your dad innocently. How rare you to talk to my wife like that, he said. Now get lost from here and clean my room, she yelled. You nodded and went upstairs to clean her room. As you finished cleaning the house, your dad ordered you to make chapchai, kimchi, bimbap, tofu for him in lunch. You went to the kitchen and after washing the dishes, you started to prepare for lunch. It took you almost two hours to make the lunch ready as you sighed and went upstairs to your room to get ready for office. Time skip. It was around 1 o'clock at night when you returned back home. You were so exhausted that you went upstairs and found yourself on the bed without even bothering to take a shower. Suddenly you woke up by the sound of screaming. You were confused. It was around 1 a.m. and by your parents were. Without wasting a second, you rushed to the downstairs to see your parents counting the money. There were a lot of briefcases which were open and each one of them were filled with the countless amount of money. You were shocked and wondering how did they get rich. Mom, Dad, you asked to the, get their attention. They both looked at you and smiled wildly, showing you their pale teeth. So my dear daughter, look how much rich we have become just in one night, he said giving you a cheeky smile. Because of me, you asked a crunching your eyebrows. You felt that someone had shifted the ground beneath you, your feet frozen on the ground. While your eyes wide open, you were not able to believe in your ears. Since the day you were born, so you had tolerated everything. No, you can't do this to me. You protest tears escaping your eyes. Who said we can't? His man will come at any time. So get ready, he said. No, you can't force me for this. I always obeyed your orders and will always do, but not this one. You said your eyes welled up with tears as you looked at them with bleeding eyes. Idiot and stupid, this crocodile tear. Sooner or later, you had to leave this house. Then why this drama? But it's wrong. You are self before you could complete the words, they both cut you off getting up. Closing the briefcases, they held them in their hands and led to their room. My aunt spoke my parents for money. They were so bad I knew but her daughter to mafia for some money. This was the worst thing I could ever imagine. I have been listening to them like a good daughter more. I won't let them ruin my life anymore. I wiped my tears and ran outside the house. I was running gamelessly on the dark road cause this is what I could do. I am running as fast as I can as I just want to escape them somehow. It's been an hour I have been running on the dark road. I was feeling out of breath now. So I decided to stop for a moment. I found the small wooden bench as I sat on it. I don't know what I did to deserve this lie but my parents said that I was born like this. I was trying to catch a breath when I heard footsteps as if someone was behind me. I turned around and my eyes caught widen seeing my dad and mom. Looking at me, my breath hitched in a throat. I quickly got up. Though I tried several times to get out of their game but couldn't as my dad is too strong, you thought we will let you go so easily, he said. You 
need some good lesson she said but suddenly the bell rang i think they came he said panicking get up from the floor she whispered jerking her hand i glared at her i won't i said with big eyes the door knocked again i knew they didn't have enough time to quarrel with me my father quickly fixed his suit and walked to the main door to open it while i was still laying on the floor as i heard some epilepsy or weird disease soon that came in the living room along with four burly men who had black hair and all of them had used a lot of gel on it they were wearing a black pant and shirt along with jacket all of them were looking so scary i was looking a little mouse in front of them dear is david adan rao and vincent they are sent by your dean changkook it seems like she will make really good use to us he said smiling at me get out from here i am going with you at Oh, she has a tongue also. He said, making all of them laugh. I'm not afraid of your boss. I said, shooting him a stare. Who said you are? First, see him, and you decide if you are afraid of him or not. He said and pointed other men. No, no, I won't. I said. It was around 3 a.m. and see some of our neighbors had come out of their houses as they were gathered around the car as if they saw seventh wonder of the world. Few aunties witnessed when this man and me in the car, but they seemed not bothered, cause they had to see something more spectacular, and that was a car. Hey, stay away from the car! Don't touch it! He said, waving his fists in the air. Seriously. My parents are concerned about that luxurious car. Others pull after half an hour finally the car stopped out sanction the security guard opened after David entered the security court then he drove inside and turned around the large fountain in front of the mansion. The bodyguards quickly walked around to open the door for you the door opened and you were carried off you were finally in his mansion. Before you clearly glance at the surrounding Vincent carry you to the upstairs placing you on the bed he glared at you there is no use to escape but boss must be here in few seconds so behave nicely to him he said looking at your angry face Before you could yell at him he went towards her making you groan throwing yourself on the king sized bed you started to sob heavily feeling pity on your destiny and all passed Suddenly you hear the door knob start to rattle and then the door slowly opened and there came Vincent inside. The boss wants to see you come with me or face the consequences. He's are looking at you. You got up thinking that you had no other choice so you followed him to the downstairs. There you saw him man in 20 sitting on the leather couch. You looked a little up and your eyes wide opened as he was the most handsome man you had your eyes laid on his dark eyes could swallow the whole ocean his tall and black hair style to the perfection lip piercing cold and powerful the mirror was making you believe that you were night dreaming how one could be so handsome and perfect you were thinking to yourself while david spoke out he is boss jin changkook he said coldly You couldn't believe your ears as you had imagined that it would be an old man in his 80s as mafia are usually this much older and mature but instead this mafia was more handsome and charming man you had ever seen. Jungkook looked at you from head to toe. Ah, you look beautiful. He said getting up from the chair as he walked to you. Why if you feel shy in front of everyone then I'll call you by nicknames in privacy he said his man smirked internally I said don't tell you to come to me you said As you were feeling so warm and protective which you never felt before but soon he backed off Who 
who did so he said loudly his hands were balled into fists now as was turned red while his neck veins were popping out as if he was going to burst with anger you remain quiet as you were only staring at his attractive face i need to talk to you privately you are like all of them they bowed down at him and quickly left outside now tell me who is behind this he asked putting his hand gently on your cheeks why you are concerned about me aren't you the one he you asked showing him your innocent eyes for a moment a smile crept on his lips looking at your cute face but soon it turned into a thin line just tell me i swear they won't be shown he said his eyes were getting red i won't you said looking into his eyes then i will use my resources to know about them he said backing up before he could walk further you quickly held his hand no please they are my parents i know they are wrong but still they brought me in this world i don't want you to them but he was cut off by you please you stand your both hands in front of him 6 years back when i saw your sparkling eyes it was around 2 am and i was trapped by my rivals on the dark street i was young and new in the mafia world as my father used to be the leader of mafia gang at that time when i was not finding hope hearing the word cops they left me The girl ran to me and taking out a water bottle from her bag she helped me to drink the water god knows if she didn't take me to the hospital at time what would have happened to me when i regained the consciousness i had asked the doctor about particular girl he said that she had no money so she went to the jeweler's shop to save her small earrings i waited for her but i was informed that after fulfilling all the requirements and paying the bill she disappeared I tried to find her almost in every corner of the Seoul but I couldn't find her few days back. I came to know that girl was shifted to another small town with her parents and finally they came back. I contacted her parents and now that girl is standing right in front of my eyes. It's you Wayan. I couldn't forget every night, every minute, every second I kept thinking about you. Hey don't cry you save my life i am fine please don't cry you said patting his shoulder time skip one month later you were sitting on the bed while jungkook was laying on the bed staring at you okay i won't he said I knew you were looking. You said and looked at him through the mirror. Oh well, you caught me. Well, princess, what is the point to do these efforts? He said, smug tugging on his lips. Oh, not again, please. She said, blushing heavily. Sorry, but I am not going to listen to you in this regard. Cook, you said blushing. Look at you, Vianney. He said, smirking. 